This video is all about shadowing and texturing armor. We'll start with a light source, add some line weights and shadow, and then move into a wide variety of textures for all of our different armor pieces. If you enjoy this video, please consider hitting like and subscribe, and if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you'd like to know the tools that I use, take a look at the description below the video. My new course on drawing superhero heads is up on Skillshare right now, so give that a look. And I've also included a link to my Gumroad site where you can find my first figure pose pack. It's got 14 male and female figures drawn from a variety of poses and angles, all in a simple line drawing without shadowing or rendering for you to use for study or as a basis for your own drawings. All right, so I'm starting here with a basic line drawing already drawn in just so we can get right into the textures and the shadowing. And to begin, I'm drawing in all my shadows. I've got a light coming in from the left and just in front. And so let me just put in a little diagram of my light in here just to make it a little bit more clear. So to start, what I like to do is I know what panels are above panels and what panels are that I want to recede. And so I just start with line weight and I'm putting some shadowing underneath his cheek here in his eye sockets, any place that's really away from the light. You can see I'm hitting the top of those little screws just underneath this panel here. And it's really just thickening the line uh, on the underside of objects and on, on parts that are facing away from the light. And so I'm shadowing in that side of the chin, underneath that cheek, and then he's got a circular kind of a thing for an ear, and so I shadowed it inside the circle just away from the light. And underneath all these little panels here, I'm making sure to just define them enough that they pop from each other. And it's really, it's taking my base drawing and then creating a bit of a negative space drawing over top of it. It's a very simple process and it really is the same all the way through. And so I'm going to do the same thing on his collar. And I've got some intersecting lines going upward on the collar. And because I'm drawing my lines between them and not over them, it pops them out and makes them look like they're, they're riding higher than the surface below. So just continuing out a little bit of shadow under his chin and just getting the whole thing kind of working together. I'm making sure not to put any real detail in right now. I just want to make sure that my overall shadow patterning is working. And so any area that I know is, is beveled or raised, I'm shadowing underneath. I've got a, a larger shadow, obviously, underneath his shoulder pad there, and then a shadow that rides underneath his lower shoulder pad. And I'm making sure that the shadow that's over his lower shoulder pad is smaller than the shadow that is on his chest because his chest is further away from his outward shoulder. I'm shadowing underneath his chest, a little cast shadow for his head across his chest on the right hand side, uh, and just shoring up my lines. I know that I've got some surfaces that are facing toward the light, so I'm just really breaking up the lines on those portions and making sure not to go fully dark. And now I'm putting in a little bit of shadow just to define his shoulder pad here. I don't want to put any texture on it yet. I just want to get a bit of a shadow pattern across the top to show that it has a lip there. Continuing the shadowing just down over his arm, underneath the, the piece covering his bicep. Now I'm, I'm moving down lower on the chest. This is a, a rubberized piece that I want to put in here, and it's tight against his body and below the, all the other pieces, so I'm making sure to give it a good cast shadow from the pieces that are above it. And it really is the same trick over and over. I'm gonna go ahead with these pieces here uh, after I cast a little bit of shadow from his arm onto his chest piece. And underneath this piece, the upper part of his, his chest is riding over, I, I guess, the, the armor piece that's over his upper stomach. And that piece rounds, so I shadowed the bottom of it, and I'm just shadowing around the uh, the uh, the side away from the light. And it, it's very difficult when I'm doing this part to not be tempted to detail uh, at all, and so I'm doing it here and there. But I'm trying very hard to keep this process separated out into different components. And so carrying out the same process, I'm I want a bit of a lip there, and a little bit of shadow there. I'm creating a bit of a, a lip there just by drawing in a thin line that creates a bit of a recess in there. Uh, so it's not just one piece buttered right up to the other. A little shadow underneath the circle. Um, and just basically negative space drawing. It's really not negative space drawing because I've got my forms defined. But that's how I'm planning my shadowing. And so the shadow under his hand piece on the back of his hand gets longer between the knuckles because the knuckles are much closer to the piece. And so when something's further away from a piece of your shadowing, the shadow is going to be longer. When it's closer the shadow is much shorter. And that's a really good thing to bear in mind when you want to 
layer a bunch of different things over top of each other and and make it look really dimensional. I'm going to put a little shadow. I've got little raised pieces on the back of his hand. And so I just shadowed underneath them and on the side away from the light a little bit heavy just to pop them a little bit more. I want this piece here to lip under. And so I just drew it dark. And now I've got a bunch of uh, wires and cables for his leg. And so I'm just drawing shadows underneath them. I'm making sure he's got a piece overlaying the whole thing. And so the shadows between the pipes are going down much lower and then they're rising up for the pipes. And that, and that really adds to their dimensionality. Cast shadow from the top part of the knee to the bottom. And this whole part here is really the underpinning for making all of your textures really work. If you just draw textures on top of a, a line drawing with no line weight and no shadowing or anything, uh, so much of texture is based on little recesses of light. It needs your overall lighting scheme in order for it to hold together and for it to work. And so now that we have all that in, I'm going to start actually doing some textures. And for the upper shoulder pad, I want to do something that's very rugged and damaged and like a, a heavy hand pounded kind of iron sort of a look. And so to do that, I'm just putting in a lot of larger dark shapes, kind of squiggles. I'm making sure that when I draw my shapes, I'm if I round outward like here, I shadow underneath it and it creates a look of a, a little bit of a, a divot of shadow. And just doing that everywhere gives it the illusion of a very rugged surface. It's very important too that I make sure that I have an overall lighting scheme that these are working within. So I do a little bit of back and forth and make sure that I'm, go I'm going darker away from the light and then fading it out toward the light. And now for the bottom piece, I'm giving it a bit of a beveled ridge just to give it a little dimension. And I'm just going to make this shiny just by adding some quick little lines. And these are, these are basically just reflections that are stretched across a flat surface. Now for the armor plates covering his bicep and tricep, I'm doing something that's actually very similar to, I guess, a, a stonework where I'm just drawing cracks through it. I want it to look really, really weathered and beat up. But I also want to make sure that it looks like one cohesive piece. And so when I render over it, I'm making sure that the rendering gives it an overall rounding and that it holds it together. One thing that I really like about good rendering is that it can actually really define an overall piece as a piece instead of separate little pieces. And so a little bit more reflective lighting on the little centerpiece there. Now for the inside of his elbow, I want this to be a rubberized accordion kind of a material. And so I'm just going heavier with my, my lines. And then I'm, I'm putting a, just a little hit of shadow on the underside of those lines from where they come out from the shadow underneath the upper piece. And that really gives it the illusion of being uh, a dimensional kind of rubberized piece. And I want this piece to be rubberized too. So I'm just going very dark with it and then dark along the top too, because for a dark shiny material, you actually really see where the light is coming from exactly. And because it's coming kind of from the front too, you don't see it right along the top of the surface. You see it riding uh, toward the top. Rendering around this little circle area here, and I'm making sure that all my render strokes are angling in toward the circle. When you're rendering anything, you really want to make sure that you have a, an overall plan and you have a shape in mind underneath that you are accentuating instead of just instead of just drawing lines over without thinking about the underlying shape. And so here I'm just going ahead and beveling my lines. It gives it like the, it gives it really the illusion of some detail and then just some small little details in there. And now I want this piece to look like a, a cloth strap. And so I'm just doing like a strapping kind of a texture that would be like a that'd be like something you'd see on a backpack or maybe a, like a military belt. And I'm doing just a little bit of rendering on these pieces here just to soften them. I want them to look like rounded, kind of softer pieces, not overly soft. And so I'm not rendering too much, just enough to give it that kind of a feel. And so now for this piece, this is another rubberized piece. It's close to his body. And so I'm drawing my cross pieces. This is going to be the same as the accordion material in the inside of his arm. And so I'm doing the same thing. I'm just drawing thicker lines. This time I'm actually putting in the beginning of my line thicker where it comes behind the piece in front of it as I draw the lines. And this is how I tend to do it. I, I don't really draw a thicker line and then draw my extra little shadows. I kind of do it all at once, but I wanted to break it down for that first piece just so you kind of see exactly what goes into the process. And you can see this is a very, very simple thing. It's very repeatable and I can use this kind of a technique all over the place. And it really, really recesses that back, that little section. And so here I'm just giving this a bit of a chip paint kind of a a modeled texture and now rendering up from where it rounds away from the light 
this whole side is going to be a little bit more rendered because it's overall facing away from the light. And then as I come up, I want to create a ridge there. And so I'm leaving a little gap open and I'm making sure that all of my rendering comes up along the shape of that form and doesn't just go directly upwards. I could do that, but I really like to follow the underlying shape as much as I can when I'm doing my rendering. And just a few lines along the top of that form just to define and make it more clear that it's rounding up toward the light. It's not something that's necessary, but I think it can be fairly descriptive, making that leather just by darkening that little piece there. And now for this piece, I wanted to do one of my favorite patterns. This is something you can do on a garbage can, on all sorts of different things. And really all it is is drawing a line down where maybe broken up just a little bit. And on the side of the line that's facing away from the light, I put some little bumps of shadow. I'm lightening it as I go toward the light, darkening it as I go away, and then darkening it again as I round away from the light on the closer side. And here we're going to do one more quick little pattern of a kind of a rubberized material. And I'm just, I'm combining shapes and I'm using some line weights and breaking up my shadowing and allowing raised pieces below to ride higher in the shadow and then the shadow to go deeper where those pieces aren't really, really pushes them out. And so now this is a texture that I use all over the place. This is a really effective one. I use it for leather. I can use this for metal, all sorts of things. And all it is is it's just a very, very small squiggle that starts darker and it fades almost like rendering. And it really is just making sure to use larger shapes toward the bottom and then just getting a little smaller toward the top and rounding toward the light. It's a very very simple thing and can be effective for so many different textures. A little more detail on his neck piece there. And just and just refining where some of those are in space by using a little bit of shadow. I'm doing a bit of a like a gem kind of a thing here so it's a reflective material drawing some quick little lines through it to make it look reflective and then just shoring up some of my line weights just to push it back underneath the chest. I decided to give him a little gem on his chest here. This is a dark gem. You can see there's a highlight up toward the light and then a, a little bounce light at the bottom. And I'm not drawing all the way to the edges of it because it's a bit of a, an anastrophic effect. And what that is, is, is light coming from the side of an object is going to be much brighter than light that you see directly pointing at an object. So you see side lights on things that are especially reflective. It seems a little complex, but it's actually a very simple thing to use in practice. Now for his chest, the chest is rounding and so I'm running my quick reflective lines kind of crossways along where it rounds away from the light and then rendering down out from it to give it the look of a reflected light from below. I don't have really reflected light in this picture aside from on objects that are especially shiny. Now I'm erasing out here because I want this to be reflective so I can't have a shadow going all the way to the edge of my form so I just erase that out so I could have a bit of a reflective light coming along his side. Another one of my favorite techniques is, is just simple circles like this along a form. I'm making sure to round the circles away from the form on the other side and then I want the circles to look like cutouts so I'm just putting a simple shadow away from the light on the top portion of the circles. On the further circles the shadow it takes up most of the space because you really don't see much light in there. And I'm just going ahead, some of these little bolt things here, I'm drawing some detail along the top of it, connecting them up and just creating patterns. And these sorts of patterns can be very, very realistic looking or very fake looking. And it all really comes down to your, your simple negative space, pushing things back just with little bits of shadow underneath. I wanted the underside of this ridge here to be darker, but I didn't want to go all the way dark with it. That's a choice I could have made. I just decided to use rendering. And now I want this portion here it's a round away from the light so I put a little bit of rendering there and in order to compensate I put a little extra rendering on the underside there just to make sure that it separates well. Another shiny portion on his head this is the same as the gem that he has on his chest. I tried to go lighter with it and I didn't really like how it worked so I darkened it in and then I decided to make this whole part of the top of his head a darker metal and so the same way that I did on some other pieces I'm shadowing on both sides of the object and really showing exactly where the light's hitting it. It's taking a minute to render underneath the chin and round it away from the light and then some extra little detailing and, and shadowing just to help define some of these small pieces. Some cracks on his face. I want it to look aged and like it's been weathered and been through a bit of battle. And he's got a reflective nose piece. And I'm, I'm drawing a rounding down the center of the nose piece because the nose is a little bit rounded and where it rounds away from the light, I want to give it an underlighting, a reflection from below, the same way that I did on the chest. It really is the same technique every single time. The same dark kind of material there, and you can see where the light's hitting that little piece. And I'm just going ahead and darkening in a bunch of this other stuff. What I'm trying to do there is 
is really delineate the difference between his face and all of the gear and whatever detail he's got along the top. A couple little bolts, I'm just evenly spacing them on both sides, nice and small. And they're just, they're not really a full circle. What they are is just a little curve of shadow pointed away from the light. Tubes are something I run into with these kinds of costumes and just, you know, technological backgrounds all the time. So I wanted to draw a few tubes coming out of his costume from the back of his head, maybe to some kind of a device on his back. And I really like using a crisscross pattern on it, rounding around the form of the, the pipe. It gives it a bit of a fabric look and it's something that texturally can just kind of separate it out and maybe make it look a little bit more realistic. Bit of a cast shadow on the pipe that's in the background there and just a few other little bits and pieces. And for this pipe, I'm going to do something that's a little bit more like what I used to do long, long ago when I worked to Top Cow, and this is a bit more of a geeker kind of an effect, uh, somewhat. And so what I did is I just used the same shape going across, then I put some line weights along one side of that little shape, and now I'm just drawing some extra shapes to augment it and breaking up the profile a little bit so it looks like it's kind of ridged and, and not just one solid piece all the way up along. I find using an, a bit of an assembly line process for these kinds of details, it makes them very, very easy. And this is why at Top Cow we could do these kinds of pipes and details in no time at all. And people outside the studio really struggle with them because at the studio we just had such a great system developed for drawing them quickly. I decided to go shiny and reflective with his his upper leg here and a lot of quick lines along the form. And then I'm where it rounds away from the light. I again created a bit of an underlight by shadowing across and then rendering out from it and then defining up some of my shape just along the bottom ridge there. And I'm going to do the, the back of the leg the same way. Just a very simple, quick kind of a line. Instead of a shadow, it gives it a reflected light from the side. So now here I'm drawing shadows underneath some circles right there and drawing in the shape of my circles that are raised and then shadowing from above and letting it rise up over where the circle is and then just a little bit of rendering just to kind of accentuate it and get the idea across. I think it worked actually without the rendering and maybe I, I kind of hurt the effect a little bit with too much rendering, which is why I'm starting to put a little bit more rendering on it even there. That's tends to be when I struggle, I start putting more lines on things. And so here I'm doing my basic same garbage can kind of a pattern. So I'm drawing a line a little bit broken up and all of my breakup is on the side of the line away from the light. And then I'm creating a ridge along the top just by thickening it up. And then along the top, I want it to round. So I'm just pooling up a little bit of shadow up in there. I'm just defining some shapes in here, just using some shadow patterns. Now for this piece, this is a, a patterning of shadow that I use quite a bit. And it's just four or five lines in one direction that I'll go in a slightly different direction, four or five lines in a bit of a different direction. And it can give you a bit of a metallic kind of a texture. It actually gives you, it's a texture that seems to work for all sorts of different surfaces. So I, I use it all over when I really want to just get something that's a little different and break it up from the overall texture that I've got working on something else. Now for this piece, this is a bit more like my shoulder that I started doing textures on. It's probably a texture that's a bit more appropriate for like a, a classic sort of an armor rather than something that's high tech. But I'm drawing just a bunch of simple squiggle shapes all over here, just getting them defined all over the shape. And then once I've got them in there and defined, I can go ahead I'm drawing a bit of a ridge of shadow along the top and I just start putting some shadows underneath the shapes and just bringing them out, defining them. It's it's actually very difficult to make a mess of this. I've tried, I have done this at the end of very long deadlines and it's still, it's a technique that really works. If you just draw in your simple squiggle shapes and then just go a little thicker and thinner with the lines and bear in mind where your light is. So you go lighter where your light is and then darker and heavier where it is and you get a nice kind of a squiggle pattern that looks like it's some sort of an ornate design with very little work at all. And now for his other leg, I'm doing this one shiny again. I've got a cast shadow coming along it. I've gone a little darker with my lines running down the leg because it's coming further away from the light. I wanted it to be a little darker. And then I'm rendering across it just to darken it and push it back without overdoing my lines that run along the form too much. So now I'm just going into the head, giving him a little bit of rendering. I want this to look nice and dirty. I could have really just left this alone, but I'm just rendering along the form kind of around it and giving it a little bit more texture. I want it to look a little soft and give it a bit of an organic feel. All right, that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully we'll see you Monday nights at eight o'clock for our live stream and I will see you in the next video.